Welcome to Game Data. This week we're taking a moment to talk about a new-ish cloud gaming feature which might not seem necessary to everyone. Specifically, I wanted to highlight why streaming games from the cloud to an Xbox Series X not only makes sense, but was a feature the Series X was sorely needing at launch. If that sounds odd to you, even if you're a non-believer in cloud gaming and think that streaming to a competent console sounds awkward, just keep watching and I'm sure you'll see my point. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. For those who are less familiar with how cloud gaming works, let's start with an analogy. Consider YouTube. As you're watching this video, images and audio are currently streaming from a server in your area through an internet connection to your computer. For cloud gaming, you can take that same idea and add an additional layer of complexity. On top of the image and audio streaming, you'd also send information to that server. For example, button presses on a controller. The computer hosting the server interprets the input as you send it and sends you back images and audio created by the game in response to your input. Now, that's a very concise, simplified version of what's going on, but the benefit to all of this is that a majority of the processing needed to play the game happens on that server and not your computer. Essentially, as long as the computer you're using has a strong connection to the server, generally a reasonably reliably fast internet connection, and can display video at a desired frame rate and resolution, you can play extremely demanding games from a low-powered computer, which couldn't typically run the game itself. For example, through Stadia, I can easily play Destiny 2 on my Surface Duo 2 with a decent frame rate and resolution but running the game directly on the Duo itself would look terrible, if there were even any way to get it running at all. As an aside, I also want to be upfront with y'all, I'm a total believer in cloud gaming. I signed up for Stadia at launch and sunk many hours into the mobile xCloud beta. In general, I think some form of streaming service will likely be core to game availability in the future. I've had no issues personally using current cloud services, for me, it all just works, but I know there are more than a few people out there who have had different experiences. We'll dive into all of that a bit more in a future video, but for right now, this video won't go into the particulars of why streaming may not work for some folks. Feel free to drop your own experiences down in the comments, by the way, but overall, cloud gaming is a functional and expanding piece of the gaming market right now, and this video treats it as such. Okay, with that out of the way, y'all must be wondering by now what all of this has to do with the Xbox Series X. I mean, the console's not the most powerful computer on the market, but it's still a competent mid-range desktop equivalent with a processor and operating system meant to play hyper-optimized modern games at a respectable frame rate and resolution. Like, Honestly, I feel like most PC gamers would even be more than happy having a tower with the same specs and price as the Xbox Series X. It's a far cry from the likes of a phone like the Surface Duo 2, and has no trouble playing a game like Destiny 2 off its own hardware. So why all this talk about game streaming? Well, I have two words for you, storage and speed. The unfortunate reality of playing games on modern consoles is that games are becoming increasingly large in size. The one terabyte internal NVMe SSD in the Series X can only handle so many of these games before filling completely. It's not impossible to manage downloaded games to only keep what you're actively playing on the system itself, but once full, players need to either delete games, shell out way too much money for the official memory card expansion, or attach an external drive via USB to download more. While the expansion card is a solid, albeit expensive, choice that allows for the same functionality as the internal drive, plugging a drive into the Series X via USB comes with a ton of restrictions. 
over USB, players can only either play older console games or store newer games until they're ready to be transferred back to the internal drive. But both extra storage options aren't exactly the best and really only serve to delay the inevitable, a drive which can't handle downloading more games. Plus, even with smart management, the massive size of modern games takes forever to download. Unless you're lucky enough to have an incredibly fast internet connection, games can take anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours to download completely, depending on their size. From personal experience, nothing takes the steam out of finding a new game on Game Pass to try out, quite like having to wait an hour for the game to become playable on my console. Part of this problem can be circumvented by, you know, increasing the speed of your internet connection. But, you know, that's kind of difficult. And I can reliably get around a 500 megabits per second download speed on my own router from a wired connection, and it still takes 20 plus minutes to fully download a modern 100 gigabyte game. Both the problems of download speed and storage space may get better over time as internet speeds get faster and storage drives become larger. However, realistically, there's a good chance games will increase in size in parallel with those advancements. Given that Game Pass's massive library has been one of the main selling points of buying an Xbox instead of a PlayStation 5 over the past year or so, these two bottlenecks create some real friction for players like myself. After all, I'd rather be playing my games than clearing out my hard drive or waiting while the game downloads. That's where Xbox Game Pass Cloud Streaming, aka xCloud, comes in. Back in November, Microsoft enabled an xCloud beta on its modern consoles for anyone subscribed to Game Pass Ultimate. For anyone who only has an Xbox Series S or the older Xbox One, this means they can have access to the higher processing power of the Xbox Series X without needing to buy another console. That's pretty freaking awesome. There's been a constant shortage of Series X consoles since launch. So any way to eke out even a little bit more longevity out of those older or lower powered consoles could make all the difference for anyone not wanting to spend an incredible amount of time hunting down a Series X in the wild. But where does that leave Series X owners? Obviously, we don't quite get any processing benefits since we'd basically be streaming games from other Series X consoles. However, streaming does allow us to work around the storage and download speed restrictions. You see, streaming removes the need to download games altogether. Even if my console's SSD is 100% full, this means I can still play new games without needing to uninstall anything from my console. Considering the number of 100 plus gigabyte games I typically have installed, not having to constantly uninstall games saves me a ton of time when inevitably I want to play those games again. Not to mention, when I do start up a game stream, I can start playing those games within seconds instead of needing to wait an incredibly long time for those games to download. With the massive library offered by Game Pass, reducing the initial load time to under a minute or so makes it a lot easier to jump around the library and try new games. And that's really the key thing here. Streaming a game not only works around the limitations created by all games now requiring hard drive space and downloadable content, but also enables players a sense of freedom with the games they want to play. Game Pass already has a large library that's almost impossible for any one person to completely play through. Combine that library size with the time needed to download each and every game, and it becomes very time consuming to even play a fraction of what's available for the system. But with game streaming, the game starts up almost immediately without any upfront time or drive commitments. I can easily try out a game, see if I like it, and you know, if I don't, never touch it again within the span of a few minutes. If this had been part of the console version of Game Pass at launch, I feel like the Series X would have been even more compelling than it already was. 
It makes it so much easier to try before I buy. After all, the best possible way to play these games will ultimately be to download them to my console. Uh, no one's debating that. Through cloud gaming though, I can play a game for a few minutes, see if I'm interested, and if so, download it to my console if I have the space. Heck, I can even play the game from the cloud while it's downloading with the sync save data between the two different versions to save myself time. It's such a great concept, which removes a lot of hassle, and I'm excited to see how the service continues to grow in the future. As positive as I feel about all of this, I do feel obligated to bring up some of the downsides of the current xCloud implementation for consoles. For one, Game Pass Ultimate is a pretty expensive service. There's a lot of value for that money, for sure, but it's basically the cost of buying three extra brand new physical games per year, without any technical ownership of the games in the Game Pass library or control over what remains in that library over time. If you don't foresee yourself playing at least three or four of the games provided by the service per year, there's a good chance it's not for you, especially not just to play the cloud streaming features. Plus, xCloud on Series X is currently in beta and not quite as polished as its mobile implementation. I've recently tried streaming a few games and noticed some dropped frames every once in a while, even while using a very solid, very fast wired connection. All, although it should be noted that all were still perfectly playable, just occasionally not the smoothest experience. Also, uh, not all Game Pass library is available to stream, so there's definitely some work to be done before you'd consider buying Game Pass Ultimate just for xCloud on consoles. Still, being able to quickly play a large number of games without the anxiety of managing storage is pretty handy and maybe worth trying if you already subscribe or plan to subscribe in the near future. It also signals one real promise of an all digital future that provides more freedom for consumers to explore as many games as they wanna try. And it's really difficult to see that as a bad thing. So what do y'all think of cloud streaming overall? Are storage restrictions and long download speeds enough to make you consider trying it out the next time you play on Xbox? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, show your support by clicking that like button and then also clicking the subscribe button. Unlike Game Pass, I promise you, both are completely free. We post new videos at least every two weeks and have plenty of tech videos on the horizon. Until next time, catch you later.